to rebuild in that area, we could be wiping out species. Um, when I took the initiative to bring my discussion to my high school, the youth wanted to get involved as well. So everyone I talked to, most everyone, decided that the plans to petition against it would be beneficial to not only the high school, but also the community. Um, the youth, the cap there is the degrading of the, the soil and the land above it contains PVC, dioxin, arsenic, and mercury. Mercury, And if we degrade that, I don't know how many people will want their children and other and themselves playing them there and using those space. Um, and if the people, if more people decide to come to the area, the classroom area that we use in the um, woods will be taken away from us, and it's very important to us to use that that space to learn more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you I also have a petition that I got for Thank you. Next speaker, please, is Paul Hularos. Yes, Roger, we'll take that petition if you have a place. Uh, it's a 95% signature of the words that I talk at. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Paul Hularos, and I live at, <coughs> excuse me, I live at 65 Jones Avenue. Mm -hmm. My concern at uh, Jones Avenue and Sycamore Creek is this is a wildlife conservation area. We have a lot of wildlife there. We have a lot of deer, coyotes, wild turkey, even cottontail rabbits, and I haven't seen them around my house in a while because they've been chased by wandering dogs that are let loose in the area, which is really a major concern of mine. And we need to pay attention to that. You know, we talk about natural resources and the environment. We need to protect it. In addition to that, on Jones Avenue, we have three commercial activities. We have the Clipper Home, we have the uh, Wentworth Scrap Metal, and we have the Alps. And the traffic on that street is tremendous. It is a lot more than, it's, I've lived on the street for 40 years. And it is an incredible number of cars. I don't know what the number would be, but I would say considerable. And the last thing, the parking is not existent right now, but we need to pay attention to that. And I don't know if they could come in from the high school to park somewhere up in that area, instead of coming from Jones Avenue, because the traffic is greater than it should be on Jones Avenue. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Paul. Next speaker, please, is Lenny Mulaney. <coughs> Hello, my name is Lenny Mullaney. I live at 248 Willard Avenue, and I sit on the Blue Ribbon Committee. I'm a representative of the school board. Um, I want to thank, first of all, all of the citizens that have come to so many of our meetings. Um, the meetings have been open. We've had public comment continually, and even those that don't always agree with perhaps what the committee is saying, I'm really grateful for citizen participation and the passion and thoughtfulness that they bring to all of the discussions and make us think a little harder. I'd like to respond to a few of the concerns that some of the citizens have brought forth. I believe we need to open the gates. A tall chain link fence at the entrance says keep out. This is public property um, that is intended for passive recreation and we'd like to invite people to come in. Um, I think the more people that access and use the land, the uh, safer the land will be. Uh, my husband, Donald Braydown, who couldn't come tonight, um, is a long distance runner and runs there almost every morning and says he has never seen uh, evidence. He runs about dawn of vagrants or uh, you know, drug use or anything like that. Um, the land needs to be accessible to handicap those that are handicapped, uh, the elderly, people that have uh, or in wheel, need wheelchair access, so we need the parking to be brought up to the cap so we can have handicapped access. Um, in conclusion, uh, the committee has been guided by um, all the residents and many experts. I see my time is up. Um, so I thank everybody for their participation and hope that people will come out and enjoy this wonderful asset. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please, is Ryan Baker. <coughs> Good evening. 
Uh, my name is Ryan Baker. I live at 281 Sagamore Avenue in Portsmouth. Um, I live at the essentially the gateway to Jones Avenue, right on the corner. Um, I'm going to talk about the uh, Sagamore Creek land. And uh, first off, I just want to say fundamentally, I really don't disagree with cleaning up the land and using it for light, light recreational use. I think having that area cleaned up would certainly be a, a good idea for the city. Um, one of my concerns is that I just don't think that the main entrance to this new park or this residential air, recreational area should be on Jones Avenue. Um, I second the, the speaker earlier that said there's lots of concerns with the Clipper home, there's lots of trucks, the, uh, the uh, scrap metal yard, the Alps, there's lots of different types of cars that are going up and down. I have two little kids that are right on that corner, and every Sunday I see a couple beer cans in my hedges of people that have tossed them in there and I'm over there fishing them out and there's lots of people that go back into that area and do a lot of things that, that are, are not policed by a police force. Um, what, one of my suggestions would be by looking at that map, is there another way that we can access this land? Is there a way that we could access it through the high school? Can we find a way to put a parking area within the high school? Uh, I'm not saying, you know, don't have any parking spots on Jones Avenue. I think some, a few spots here and there, but I really <coughs> feel strongly that Jones Avenue should not support an increased traffic load. I think it's a residential street that's extremely narrow. And I think by forcing more and more people back there, you're opening up the floodgates to having more and more people and, uh, you know, could, could harm uh, some of the residents in the future, especially kids that are playing in the road. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marty. Next speaker, please, is Ralph Kibanata. Good evening, and thank you, Ralph Kibanata, 1374 Islington Street. I'm appealing to the City Council to put the transportation ordinance to rest by telling Uber that there will be no further changes to our ordinance. You gave the PD the responsibility to determine the validity of Uber's background checks. Lieutenant Cummings has reported that their checks are inadequate and recommends the New Hampshire state checks. This should be the end of it. The assistant mayor was quoted by the Herald as stating, we need an ordinance that Uber can do. What we need is an ordinance that makes our citizens and visitors safe, not an ordinance that is convenient to Uber. What we need is a rideshare service that is willing to abide by our ordinance. It appears that Uber uh, may support the Uber driver known as Grandma, according to the Portsmouth Herald report of November 29. She's a scofflaw. She's not a folk hero, causing an unnecessary waste of our police resources and taxes. It's time to make it clear that our ordinance is necessary for public safety and that we support our PD's findings. It is totally unfair to give this responsibility to the PD and then ignore their finding. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Next speaker, please, is Nancy Johnson. Nancy Johnson, 81 Clinton Street. I'm speaking on the second one Creek, Creek Master Plan. I want to thank the mayor for setting up the Blue Ribbon Committee and uh, it's been working on this plan for over a year. They've well thought out, I think. They've accepted public input all along. I've put in input. They've considered all different opinions and thoughts. Um, I think that uh, since the publicity that the site has already gotten from the newspaper, that there is going to be some increased use. I don't think there's going to be a mass number of people going to the site. But I think there will be increased use, which will cause further congestion at that gate. Um, we use the site quite often, and we have had to turn around and leave because there is no place to park. And then we go back later, so that makes two sets of trips down that road instead of one trip down the road. Um, so I think that limited parking is kind of adding to the congestion instead of um, you know, decreasing it. The more open and used the site is, I believe, I hope, the less likely illicit activity will take place. We have never seen any evidence of it. If, if, if people say it's happening, maybe it is. With Pierce Island, I believe, once it became more open, that problems decreased. Um, we look forward to the council adopting the master plan, setting up a schedule for implementation, 
and I trust that there will be opportunities for public input during the various stages of that implementation. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Next speaker, please, is Renee Bergeron. You need to have to leave. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, then I'll go back. And next speaker is Stephanie Franz. My name is Stephanie Franz. I live in Deerfield, New Hampshire. And I'd like to thank the council for allowing me to speak this evening. I'm speaking on the Uber. I guess I'd like to thank you for the compliment that you gave me earlier. Um, I'm not here to attack anybody. I'm here to do my constitute, what I feel is my right to be able to drive and own my own business and be an Uber driver. I love Portsmouth, New Hampshire. I've said that many a times. Um, It, it's it's hard for me because you have so many directions I want to go to, but I guess the bottom line is what I'd like to say is that the taxis have been giving the services that they have contracted with the city to do, then Uber would not be an issue. I've had so many complaints about the taxis in this in, in Portsmouth. I've never ridden in one, so it's secondhand to me. But I know I will not ride in a taxi. In I'd like to thank you for your time. I'd like to thank the people who have come here in support of Uber, and I hope you make a decision. I'm tired of being pulled over, too. All right? I've been pulled over and cited four times with a possible amount of $3,500 in fines, and I've been warned, pulled over and warned. Um, fortunately, Uber is standing behind me, and I will stand behind Uber. Um, and I will say that any of the officers that have pulled me over have been very considerate to me, and I have no problems with them doing their job. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Next speaker, please, is Harrison DeBrick. My name is Harrison DeBrick. I live in Dover. Um, what I'd say is the taxi drivers, which have you believe, so, excuse me, can I have your street address? Uh, 803 Martha's Way. Thank you. Uh, the taxi drivers would have you believe that Uber performs an inferior background check. This is wrong. In reality, <coughs> Uber performs the following checks. They perform a social security number trace, a sex offender search, a national criminal search, a counter criminal search, and even a terrorist watch list search. I don't think the person police does that. Um, the check performed by the Force of Police does not appear to be a complete check. Uh, according to the State Police website, which is who does the check for the Force of Police, according to what I can find, um, they only check for convictions inside the state of New Hampshire. They do not do an actual check. Thus, it's likely that their check isn't even in compliance with the ordinance itself. So, they haven't even checked all the taxi drivers out potentially. So, they're not even in compliance with the ordinance. Um, Basically, the city is levying thousands of fines, thousands of dollars in fines to drivers and his friends, and yet there's serious doubt that they're even in compliance with their own orders. Simply put, Uber's a better check. Requiring Uber drivers to submit to a second and inferior check is baffling. One has to wonder what's going on here. Could it be that the taxi drivers would fail a more comprehensive check? Could it be this is just another example of uh, one group of companies trying to use government to keep competition out? Uh, I call on the council to remove the uh, requirement that a second and fear check be performed by the city. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Next speaker, please, is uh, Christopher David. Thank you to the council. Um, I spoke here a few months ago and made the point that... Uh, Christopher, excuse me, can I have your name? Oh, sorry. Christopher David, 96 Mont Vernon Street, go. <clears throat> I made the point uh, a number of months ago that by having Portsmouth get ahead of the rest of the state in regulation of Uber, you're creating a wall to innovation. It might be a low wall, it might be easy to go down to City Hall, 
um, but something that entrepreneurs consider seriously when looking at where to innovate. You scare away the law of Biden, entrepreneurs, but you attract a different type of entrepreneur. You attract the black market entrepreneur. There's all sorts of people out there looking for walls to build tunnels under. I get messaged all sorts of stuff since starting the free Uber Facebook page. If anyone is not yet convinced that the ordinance, at least so far, has had the effect of doing the opposite of its intent, please let me know. I will send you story after story of Uber driver, Uber customer, Uber supporter, people who get mistaken for any of the above, being harassed in a multiple variety of forms by taxi people. <clears throat> But I'll close by saying there are people looking very closely at this. And if the calculation is that by having Uber comply, that this is going to be done, I don't think that's the case. I would ask you to please consider Councilman Forsen's initial proposal from the April, I think, 6th meeting, where he laid out a pretty compelling argument that I haven't heard anyone address for why ride sharers should not be regulated, just like the middle are not. And if you want to make the taxis happy too, go one step further and do what Sarasota, Florida has done, what Collier County has done, and a number of other cities have done, and that is deregulate transportation services entirely. That is how you solve this overnight and make everyone happy. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Next speaker is Joe Valenzuela. Excuse me. Look down here, down. You're writing it worse than mine. Yes, uh, my name is Joel Valenswell. I work with the U.S. New York State Street in Concord, although I'm going to be moving to this area in February. Now, one of the things that attracted me about this area has been this council's willingness to embrace new and innovative forms of business, such as ride sharing. Fortunately, it seems to pay a little bit of a snack. And unfortunately, I've been watching that all year long. Um, the local cab companies do everything in their power to try to keep Uber out, including threatening from as early as January to sue the city over extending a grace period to Uber drivers while this ordinance was worked out. And since then, uh, employees of cab companies have been relentless in harassing and bullying uh, Uber drivers and customers and their supporters, uh, including um, verbally, including physically using their vehicles to block Uber drivers, and also um, harassing friends who were and customers online. For example, myself and a few, um, a few friends were targeted by David Palrero, the former partner of Great Great Bay Taxi, who called us idiots and urged us to please shower. And it seems like the Port Force Police Department has displayed great reluctance to enforce this ordinance, and as rightly they should, <coughs> they have much better things to do. They could be keeping the town city and pursuing actual criminals instead of chasing around the little old ladies trying to make a living. And I, I hold a lot of sympathy for this council and for the Ports of Police Department that are unfortunately caught into a difficult position. I would just urge the council to uh, once and for all decide um, who it serves, the people of Portsmouth or the Great Bay Taxi. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is uh, Renee Bergeron, is, is Renee returning? No, she will not. So I have, um, that concludes our public comment to Barry Ellis. Is Barry here? Barry Ellis. Barry, get the final word. Thank you. Barry Ellis um, at 29 School Street in Wakefield, New Hampshire. Uh, but I do work in the city of Portsmouth. I do work in the transportation industry. Um, and I, I find it fascinating that the city of Portsmouth uh, feels a need or perhaps a moral obligation to um, protect the taxi drivers or the taxi passengers here in the city, uh, even though it feels no need or moral obligation to do so in the rest of the transportation industry. I'm not sure if you feel that the taxi industry is a, is a dangerous place in the industry. Um, in, doing, in trying to do a little bit of research online, it was interesting to find very little data on that. Um, it doesn't show up any, any 
and he lists the dangerous activities like